Hi, my name is Philip Bloom and welcome to this, my rather glam hotel room in Miami. A nice change, because the last time I spoke to you, I was in a really crappy hotel room in Christchurch in New Zealand and there were cockroaches everywhere, blood on the sheets and God knows what else. It was pretty damn gross. This, very nice, very clean. And when I did speak to you last, it was about this camera here, the Canon 5D Mark III. And you know what? I did very much like that. I'm sure you've seen the review. If not, the review URL is here. Somewhere on the screen. I'm gonna to talk to you about Nikon's new offerings, the D800 and the D4. Yes, I know they've been out a while, but I've not had a chance to get my hands on them because I've been far too busy. But I've got them now. I'm gonna spend the next week and a half checking them out and seeing how good they are at shooting video. I know they shoot great stills, but how good are they at shooting video? Because that's where Nikon has been lacking compared to Canon. And of course, I will be comparing it to the Mark III. Hope you're enjoying my tests. Here they are. That is not the sound of Miami Beach. I know you probably were expecting to see lots of sexy shots of women in bikinis running along South Beach. I'm afraid we have whatever that is, some sort of frog, I guess. I don't know. We're in Indiana. I didn't get a chance to shoot anything down in Miami. I was too busy shooting and teaching at the filmmaking masterclass in Key West. And I did have one day off. I have to say I had one day off and I didn't touch a camera apart from my iPhone. So now I'm here in lovely Indiana. The rain has gone and I have the cameras ready to test. One of the key things for me about testing the cameras is gonna be that resolution. It was the key thing for me about the Mark III and the why I was initially disappointed with it because it was soft out the camera, not that much better than the Mark II. In fact, about the same as the Mark II, but when I put it into Premiere and added sharpening, it came alive and that was great because if you tried to do that with the Mark II, looked awful or that moire aliasing came back. So just how good is the D4 and the D800 at that detail test? For me, it really is so important, along with low light performance. Well, only one way to find out, and that's to shoot some fine detail. The great thing about the D4 is it has three different types of framing, as in it can be full frame, it can be crop sensor around 1.5 times, and it can also be 2.7 times crop, which means it's going to give you effectively three different focal lengths in one lens. Of course, you get the depth field characteristics associated with that size sensor, but it is a nice thing to have. But how does it perform at all those different framings? Well, that's the problem it doesn't perform very well at all at two of them. The FX, which is the full frame, and the DX are soft. And even in post, you can't sharpen it. It's just the detail is just not there. When using the 2.7 crop, it is really, really nice, but that's the problem. It's a 2.7 times crop. So you've got to multiply your millimeter on your lens by 2.7 to get the equivalent focal length, your field of view. And that means long lens shots, no wide shots. And that's a big problem with the D4. It really suffers on the full frame and the crop. So I'm now doing a shot on the D800, the same shot I just did on the D4, which was my last chance to see if the D4 was good at detail. And this is so much better. The image looks sharp. I can see that it's, all, it's sharp just from the back of the screen, let alone when I look at it on the computer. I'm no fanboy of any camera manufacturer. I'm a total camera whore, I love them all. Well, I don't love them all, I get frustrated by them all, but I don't have any particular loyalty to one or the other. 
You may be asking, why have I got a Canon DSLR in a Nikon review video? Simply because I want to compare and see how it actually stacks up. And then you'll say, well, why didn't you have the D800 in your Canon 5D Mark III video? Well, I didn't have a D800 at that point, so it's the first time I've had them all in the same place at the same time. So now it's time to see just how much detail the 5D Mark III can do on the same shot as that D800 and see how much sharper it is than the D4 as well. A little bit about the optics I'm using for this test. I want to keep things as similar as possible, so I'm using the same lens. I'm using a Zeiss ZF, and it's a 35mm f1.4. This is Nikon mount, and I'm using a Photodarx Pro adapter so it can fit onto the Canon EF mount, and of course it fits natively onto the Nikon cameras. And on the front here, to keep my shutter speed down nice and low and correct, I'm using a Heliopan variable ND filter. So the D4 in the full frame is soft, as is the crop mode in uh, DX crop mode, which is very disappointing. The 2.7 times crop is sharp, but it is a 2.7 times crop. Unfortunately, I forgot to shoot the APS-C mode in a D800, but this is much sharper. And the 5D Mark III is sharper than a D4. I would say it's softer than a D800. So the D800 wins this test. It's funny going backwards and forwards between the Nikon and the Canon. They do certainly have some distinct differences when it comes to operating. And I would say some of them are quite quirky. For example, the Canon, if you want to see the histogram, you need to make sure that it is displaying in the screen before you hit record. Because once you've hit record and then you try and cycle through hitting the info button, it won't come up. But on the Nikons, it doesn't matter what you do, you can just hit the info button once you hit record and anything can come up, which is much nicer. Very bizarre and quirky. So I'm now taking a look at the aliasing issues with the D800 versus the Mark III. The aliasing is surprisingly not too bad at all. If you pixel peep hard, you'll spot it, but you have to pixel peep pretty hard on a D800 until you go into 720 mode. And we can see on the house on the left, we have those diagonal lines. That's why I've got the angle like this. It is very poor and utterly unusable. So that is a big problem. The Mark III, it, 1080p has no visible issues. And at 720p, again, no visible issues. But the image is definitely softer than a D800, but no aliasing. So what can you do? Well, you have to live with the frogs, I'm afraid. And you have to live with the moiré and the aliasing on the camera. So fine detail is out unless this could help. Inside this bag is a Mosaic Engineering anti-aliasing filter. The same company made the one for the Mark II, which solved those issues. Is it any good on this? Let's find out. Oh, one thing, do not get the D800E for video. The aliasing and wire will be worse because of the anti-aliasing filter being removed from that camera. It's not for shooting video, so just avoid it. This is a pre-production version of the filter. Uh, it will slot in a lot easier than using these tweezers. I feel like I'm playing that old game of operation. So make sure the sensor is clean and not full of crap. This has got a little bit of dust on it, but for the moment, uh, you have to get it in here and behind and down into this and then it just sits on there and is held in by the mirror here. So that should solve our aliasing and wire issues. Let's find out. So this is the original shot in 720 on the D800. As you can see, the aliasing is atrocious on the building on the side and on the water. Great to have 720, not so great to have these issues. But when we put in the filter, it's not perfect, but it's a hell of a lot better and totally usable. Using this filter at 1080 removes any trace of artifacts. At 720, it fixes these really, really bad ones. Here it is blown up again. So this is the original shot without the mosaic engineering filter in. Look at the very bad diagonal lines on the house. 
and with the filter in, fantastic. So much better. A real shame though that it does need the filter and isn't like this out of the camera. The internal recording on the Nikons is a disappointingly low 24 megabits per second in H.264 compared to the all I setting on the Canon 5D Mark III which can be almost up to 90 megabits a second and that is a disappointment I have to say I'd like internal recording to be nice and high and really not as heavily compressed as this although it does stand up pretty well to messing around in post but you can make it better because this camera and the Nikon D4 do something that no other DSLR does. It has clean HDMI out. So using one of these leads here, it is unfortunately using a mini HDMI lead, which is very, very worrying because they're not very solid. So make sure you get some sort of protector on that. We can plug it into a device like this. It's the sound device is PIX240, which takes HDMI or SDI and can record in ProRes or Avid DNX HD. Now this won't solve our moiraine aliasing issues, and it won't make it any sharper. What it will do is make the image way less compressed, and that's a great thing. So the D800 is now plugged in to the sound devices. This is a very, very high quality external recorder. It can record onto SSDs or compact flashes. I'm recording in ProRes HQ, which is 220 megabits a second, as opposed to the internal recording of 24 megabits a second. It's a great device. So just got to remember, you hit record on this, and off you go, and then you do your shot. Just don't hit record on the camera because it will drop to 720. Just a, a few words on this device again, nice big buttons, nice simple menu, good quality screen, runs off MPF batteries, and taking dual media. This is a really nice external recorder. This camera does have a headphone jack so we can monitor audio coming into it, and of course it is a mini jack input. There's not full manual control over this. We do have various steps, quite fine steps. Downside of this compared to the Mark III is once we hit record, we cannot change our levels of the uh, audio coming in, but we can see it on the screen. We do have meters, so it's not all bad. It's actually pretty damn good. Both the Nikon D4 and the D800 have built-in timer modes, so you can shoot time-lapse without an external controller. And it does have a very cool function where you can actually create a video, time-lapse video, in camera with the photos. It's really nice because you can set the interval in the camera and how long you want it to be doing the time-lapse for, how many shots, and then it will tell you how long the video will be at the end, and once it's finished, it creates the video. Downside, it doesn't keep the stills, which is a real shame because it'd be a great way of doing time lapse and having a nice quick preview mode after doing it. Hopefully, with a firmware upgrade, we can keep those stills. That's it for the fine detail stuff. Next test is I'm going to go down to Kessler Crane HQ, which is just down the road that way in Plymouth, and I'm going to shoot some faces of people there on the Mark III and on the D800 and see how they compare. That's enough posing. I want to see low light tests, don't you? We know the Mark III is way better than the 5D Mark II. Let's see how it stacks up against the D800. And you know what? I'm gonna bring out this little baby, the Nikon D4. You've disappointed me with your detail. I know you take great stills. How good are you in low light? This is a totally random, bizarre test. I've now left Indiana because it was just too damn dark I'm in another state, another city, I'm in Manhattan. Why? Why not?
So like any sensible person on a Saturday night in Manhattan, I'm not on the streets, I'm in a bar, and I'm gonna do my low light tests with the help of a gin and tonic and Diana. And I'm gonna start off on the D800 using a Zeiss 50mm lens and move up from 800 ISO to the max I can possibly do. Light-wise, it is nighttime outside. We do have some tungsten lights here. There is a fluctuation in the light, and that is from the TVs over there. So it's not scientific, but at least they all have the TVs flashing on and off with different channels. So try and keep them as equal as possible with the odd variable. So that's the Nikon D800 and I brought out a D4 to see how well it deals with it. It should theoretically be better because it has a much lower megapixel count. So let's see just how well she performs. It's incredibly noisy, obviously, both in audio and pushing the camera as far as the H4 setting on the D5. Open the iris up to 1.4 so you can see just how incredibly overexposed the image is at that setting on that ISO. It's insane. As these guys gather around, I'm going to put the ZF onto the 5D Mark III and see how well this camera performs under the same light conditions with the same lens. This test is so interesting, I've attracted an audience who don't care at all about cameras. These are guys who are just here for a great night out in New York and they want to see how these cameras perform at these high ISOs. It's fascinating.
crazy. It, I can see more on the screen than I can see with my eyes. That's what I love about this technology. You like that? Yeah. I do love these low light tests and it was very eye opening seeing the three cameras side by side filming the same shot and how they compare. The 100 definitely suffers due to its high megapixel count. Even at 3200 ISO it was showing noise as you can see on this 400% blow up. Other stuff it does well at, it just isn't a great low light camera compared to the other two. Now the D4, not so good in the resolution and not particularly sharp camera but here it is a full frame and it's super super clean at 3200 ISO. After being disappointing in its amount of sharpness you get in the image, the low light performance really is quite exceptional as you can see here in the 400% blow up, utterly clean and you can use these higher ISOs if you really need to. I wouldn't go too crazy but 50 odd thousand at a push with some noise reduction you can get away with it. So great stuff in the D4, just wish it was sharper. And the 5D Mark III uh, I already know just how good it is in low light. It's a huge step up from the Mark II and it's a lot better than the Nikon D800. It doesn't perform as well as the D4 but it is a sharper image and it's clean. It's clean here at 3200 ISO as you can see in the 400% blow up and even when you go to the 12800 it is totally usable. It's a great all round camera and it does very well in these low light tests. Yes, another location, in fact another country. I have left Miami to go to Indiana, to go to New York and Manhattan. I'm now back in London, back home for my sum up of the three cameras. I've been waiting for Nikon to come out with a DSLR that shoots great video ever since I got that D90 back in 2008. And it wasn't great, but I have continued buying Nikons ever since then because I am a Nikon diehard fan. I've had their cameras for eight, nine years. It was my first. DSLR. The problem is they just have not been shooting great video and they have been playing catch up to the Canons well, all the time. In fact, this is the first time they brought out cameras which are, as far as I'm concerned, usable for video. So it's great to be finally able to use all these Nikon lenses I've collected over the years natively on Nikon cameras. But is it the best idea? Are these great cameras, are they better than say the Canon DSLRs? So the 5D Mark III from Canon, it is a big step up from the Mark II. So much has been improved, way better in low light. No longer do we have aliasing and moiré, we have a nice 720p mode. And again, the aliasing moiré in that is almost lacking completely. The audio is also handled much, much better. We have a great internal recording system, up to 90 megabits a second. The image just isn't sharp enough, though, straight out of the camera. And I wish it was, because it takes time to do that in post. And it's not ideal, you'd much rather have a sharp image natively than having to fix it in post. Fix it in post is never a good way of doing things. Great camera with a couple of things I don't like. Mainly that sharpness issue and the fact there is no clean HDMI out. Otherwise a very, very good full frame DSLR. The D4 has broken my heart. This camera should be the outright winner by far. On paper it has everything going for it a nice low megapixel count. It has a great system of three different crop modes, full frame, APS-C, 2.7 native crop, incredible low light performance, clean HDMI out. It really should be the best camera here, but it really isn't. And the biggest problem is simply it is just too damn soft at the FX mode and at the DX mode. That's the full frame and the APS-C crop. And those are the two ones you're going to use the most. Having a 2.7 mode, which is nice and sharp, is great as an additional feature, not as the only sharp video mode. And that really is what it is. The other two modes are just too soft and you can't bring them back in post. Absolutely devastated that it's not as good as it should be. The low light performance is amazing and you can use it for that. I think get away with it a lot more than you can on those bright shots. If you need to get some really low light shots, this camera will work. And finally, the D800. 
it's great. It's a really good video shooting DSLR from Nikon. They finally done it. They finally brought out a camera that shoots really lovely full HD. It does have some downsides and I was very, very scared when I heard about the really high megapixel count of 36 megapixels. Absolutely insane. I don't need that for stills and I certainly don't want it for video. And the low light performance does suffer because of that. And also we do have aliasing and worry. Nowhere near as bad as we had on the 5D Mark II and other cameras and other previous Nikons. In fact, it's actually quite minimal until we go into 720 mode where it is absolutely hideous. And that's where that mosaic engineering filter comes in enormously helpful. But I don't want to use filters, third party products to make a camera work. And it is a really nice image. Yes, the internal recording is too low at 24 megabits a second. It doesn't come close to the 5D Mark III's 90 odd. But what it can do that the Canon can't is it can output that clean HDMI out. So it can use something like a Ninja 2 or PIX240 like I use, and you can record lovely ProRes HQ and have wonderful, not uncompressed, but way less compressed images than we have in the camera. It doesn't fix the moiré, doesn't fix the aliasing, and doesn't make it any better in low light, but it is a much better way of recording. Just be careful, if you are gonna use that, you need to protect that HDMI socket because it is very fragile. Mini HDMI absolutely sucks. So which one to buy? Well, I don't think I can really give you a simple answer. A lot of it will be dictated by how many lenses you own for one particular brand because the 5D Mark III and the D800 are very, very close. There's very little in it. The D800 has a sharper image, clean HDMI out, but not as good in low light and it aliases and wires without that filter. So it's like, uh, and uh, which is better for you? You have to decide. The D4, apart from its low light performance, as a video camera, it's just not good enough. The D800 is way, way better. So it really comes down to it, it's up to you. The D800, sharp image, not so good in low lights, or 5D Mark III, no aliasing, great in low light, but not as sharp. Why can't I just make one that does it all? I know you were probably expecting lots of nice shots of bikini. I expect you were. Uh, so I expect you were. Uh, so I suppose you were expecting lots of shots of bikini. So, so I suppose you were expecting lots of shots of bikini clad women running around on the beach. So I suppose you were expecting lots of shots of bikini clad women. So I suppose you're expecting some sexy shots of bikini. So I suppose you're expecting lots of sexy shots of bikini clad. Why can't I say bikini? It's not a hard word.